to another episode. Jerome here from the Bonsai Supply. Um, so it's been two weeks since I did the uh, last video of this adenium and it's grown quite a bit. Um, it's hard to believe that this is the same tree only in two weeks, right? Uh, this is all completely new growth. Uh, you remember this tree was completely bare in the last video. So let me give you a 360 right off the start of the tree here. So one of the things that you notice right off the bat is that the uh, leaves came back a lot smaller. Um, this is because uh, I'm defoliating this uh, this late in the season. Another thing that you notice is that everywhere where I made a cut, now I have on on a couple cuts I have like four different buds. On other ones I have up to six different leaves that are coming out or branches. So um, in about another maybe two months from now I can go through it again and defoliate everything and all of these fresh buds I can just um, wire them out then at that point and then I'm going to be one step closer to the ramification that I would like to have alright so if you take a look at this bud right here um, before I only have one branch here but now since I cut it back here I have one two three and four branches so once they start to come out I'm going to start to wire them into place and then I have a really good ramification at this point so that dry area right here uh, I'm going to let that continue to dry for a couple more days and then I'm going to go in with my scissors and remove that dry area was, uh, I, we got a lot of uh, questions about the um, the way that we dried out the adenium before I repotted it um, a lot of people were asking if if this is something that I do for all of my species or if this can be applied for other species um, absolutely not do not do that to any other species except for a uh, desert rose a lot of people were also commenting on, on how I achieved this uh, trunk movement right so here's a little trick that I did when I first got this tree because remember I mentioned that this used to be a uh, informal upright and now it's a cascade so how did I get all these massive roots? This is a this is a little secret on how I achieved such a massive uh, root base. So when I started the tree, it looked similar to this. Obviously, it was a, a little bigger than this. It was not this small, but this is what I did. So I took the tree and I took it out of the pot. Here we are. I'll put it there for now. I'm gonna pluck off all the weeds here. Here we are. Bring, and I uh, wash out all the soil. So one of the things that I did, um, I washed off all the soil. And now at this point, I'm gonna do my um, my root selection. So the other tree was kind of like this. And it, had a lot, it has a lot of uh, crossing roots, right? So I chose a section like this. And then I removed all of the uh, unnecessary roots. So for this job, I'm gonna use my sickle. I uh, wash this with uh, yeah, alcohol before I'm gonna use it. And this is really the best tool for bonsai. You can, uh, the, the inside of the sickle is serrated and is really sharp. You can use this to cut through roots. You can use this to repot trees. If they're root bound, you can really easily get them out of the pot. Um, so what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna look at the root movement. So. Okay, perfect. So I like the way that this root is and I like how these are folded over. Now I'm going to try to cut straight through here. I'm gonna show you why.
All right, perfect. So now that I cut a flush here, what a lot of people do is they actually use a fungicide, like a fungus powder, and they put it on here to prevent it from rotting. But I'm, I do it a little different. So the way that I do it, after I cut it off, what's going to happen now is I'm going to tie the tree up and I'm going to hang it in a shaded area for a couple of weeks until the tree is completely dried out, okay? So after um, I let this completely dry out in the shaded area, um, I'm not going to do anything to it. I'm not going to water it. I'm just going to hang it up on, some, on a little piece of wire, hang it in the shade, and let it completely dry out. Now what that does is a couple things. First of all, the tree is losing all of its weight and it starts to shrivel. And in a couple of weeks when it has shriveled, I'm going to plant it at my desired um, angle and height and thickness. And then when I start to water it, the tree, because it has suffered so much and it has lost all of the, uh, all of the water, now it's desperate to get more water so it'll stock up because now it is scared that next time this happens this drought comes along where it doesn't get any water for a couple of weeks it doesn't want to shrivel down again that far so therefore it will add on a bunch of mass now like four times the size it is now and this is how you can achieve a desert rose uh, really quickly okay so here we go So this is where the uh, adenium is going to sit now for the next couple of weeks. Um, I tied it up to this uh, palm frond and it's going to swing here for, for the next couple of weeks until it's completely shriveled up. And still, I have not addressed any of this yet. And nor will I. So a couple weeks now have passed since um, I hung this guy up from the from the uh, palm tree in the shade. It has completely dried out now and it is uh, losing its leaves already. Um, it is at a good point where now I can do the next step to it. So the bottom of it, you want to make sure that it looks like this. Do you see how, how uh, dried out it is in here? It's not wet anywhere, it's not moist, it's completely dried out. And that's exactly what you want. So at this point, you can then now go ahead and pop the uh, adenium at your desired angle. And, and this way you won't get any rot. And see, I didn't use any fungicide um, to cover up these, these, uh, these cuts. So now at this point, I have to decide if what kind of root system that I want to have in the future. So since I'm going with a, um, a root system like that, like the snail has, um, I'm going to have to plant it at a, at a specific angle. Is that what so at this point, um, I took a uh, large plastic uh, container. I have a lid with a screw at the bottom, and then I have my adenium. So I'm going to take the screw and the lid, and I'm going to attach it at the bottom of the adenium, so I'm going to screw it right in. And the reason why I do this is so that the roots now are growing out versus that they bulk up like the cortex that you normally would see on a desert rose. This is the reason why we cut it flat. And then once I plant it on an, on an angle, um, then the roots can grow into the, uh, into the uh, specific direction. Here we are. So, since I want to mimic the exact same root system that the uh, snail has, I'm going to plant it like this for the next couple of years, and then these roots will grow over the lid, and then create that that these bulky roots here. Okay. So the first step or the next step is to take my uh, all-purpose soil.
so now at this point I'm gonna leave the um, desert rose in this container at this angle for, for probably one to two years um, depending on how much the top grows I'm gonna remove some of the soil and see how far the roots have spread um, after that I can just take it out of the pot and then pot it into the uh, next pot now this tree is going to be a smaller uh, image size of the uh, big snail so it's not going to be the same scale this is going to be a lot smaller one but you can do this with any um, size of denium and develop a really cool root system so another way for me could have been instead of planting it like this to plant it like this and then I will get um, roots that would spread out like that um, versus going over the lid like this now so I could have recreated uh, this root system right here so you see how cool that looks how the roots go out so I can either go this way or this way and this is the way that I chose where the uh, roots of the snail okay oh before I forget very important now since I uh, took a screw and I put it into the uh, I uh, screwed it into the bottom of the codex of the desert rose I again am not going to water for another week so that these roots can completely dry out because now that I put that screw into the bottom of the codex um, that opened up a, a fresh wound now so I want to make sure that that dries out before I go ahead and water for the first time and then this tree goes out in full sun and I'm going to use my all-purpose fertilizer the uh, 18410 as always and this is the uh, all-purpose soil so nothing has changed there and and yeah so this this codex will now explode in growth since it, I allowed it to dry out this drastic now so I will worry about the canopy much later for right now I'm just gonna let it recover and work on the root system so another question that we got a lot from the last uh, Adenian video was what type of soil do we use? Now, we uh, use our all professional soil for everything. For the soil mix, we actually have two different uh, professional soil mixes. One we have with pine bark and one we have without. Now, now the one that we use for everything is made out of lava rock, pumice, turfus, charcoal, and expanded clay. And this is really the best uh, type of soil that I I have used this type of soil forever now and for me this is my favorite soil mixture it gives an aeration you get water drainage you get acidity um, you really have everything so this is why I really love this type of soil and I use it for everything I have been using it for everything and I will continue to use it for everything even if you're in a different climate you can still continue to use that soil um, for instance, what we do in our home, we actually use that soil mixture even for herbs, flowers, and the good thing about it is you really don't have to think about, oh, do I have to water today? Has it been three, you know that three day thumb rule where you put your thumb in the black soil? You really don't have to do that because you can just water every single day and you never have to worry about overwatering because it's so free draining. So that's uh, really a plus for that for that soil mixture. So, so in case you were wondering how the uh, snail is doing, here it is. And this is only, um, it's only been a couple of weeks since I did the uh, defoliation and I cut back all the branches. Um, so this came exactly back as I expected it and it's so happy it even started to flower. So I really love it when a plant comes together like this. Um, I also thought of changing the name from snail to elephant. Um, I don't know, what do you think? Should I keep its name as a snail or should its new name be the elephant? Um, I'm open to suggestions, so please let me know what you think this tree should be called. And um, I hope you guys learned a little something in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please make sure to subscribe and click the like button for more of this awesomeness here. And uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Okay?